Today is October 26, 2015. The price of gold hasn't been too exciting since I did a previous video. Right now, silver's at 1586 about, gold's about 1163.70. That's not what is interesting. What is interesting is the email that I got from goldsilver.com. You know, Mike Maloney, Gold Silver. Now, this is interesting. Mike Maloney had set out an original prophecy. He was like the prophet of gold and silver bullion. Like, Mike Maloney's prophecy was laid out years ago. And he made predictions in his prophecy. And one of these predictions was that gold and silver are going to have this big pullback. There's going to be deflation first. They're going to have this big pullback before, the fi be before they go to the stratosphere, right? And he said that in this pullback, that there'll be people who will doubt Mike Maloney. And they'll, they'll deny his message. And then... Then, gold and silver will shout to the moon. Well, in this email, Mike Maloney is denying his own message, right? Remember, gold and silver bullion only. Only the most recognizable gold and silver bullion, because that's what he sold, I guess. But, no, he had an original message, which, of course, kind of changed. But now, in this email, he says, in the third lot, third paragraph, neither is gold and silver bullion alone sufficient. Okay, this is, you know, so apparently we're no longer in the gold and silver wealth cycle because if we were still in the gold and silver wealth cycle, wouldn't he be saying gold and silver because he's like this big wealth cycles guy? So, I mean, he talks about, he says, for centuries, the wealthy families of Europe and Asia have understood a simple truth that seems to elude most of the modern world. Blah, 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 blah. Um, instead, these families like the infamous Rothschilds, and of course, it is not a good um, gold-silver article if it doesn't talk about the Rothschilds. I mean, you got to throw the Rothschilds in these things somewhere, right? Otherwise, it's not going to be. So he's got to throw the Rothschilds in there, okay? They've stood the test of time by handing their wealth down through the ages, working outside the system. They thrive during wars, revolutions, economic collapses, and more. Now, wars, revolutions, and economic collapses, that is the time that the gold and silver is supposed to shine its strongest, isn't it? I mean, I think we've all read the, the gold and silver lore, and that through wars, revolutions, and economic collapses, that's supposed to be the well sucker for gold and silver. That's when it, you get the most bang for your buck, right? If that's when you're getting the most bang for your buck, how is gold and silver bullion alone not sufficient, right? I mean, isn't that... Isn't that the time when, you know, in Weimar, Germany, you take your one ounce of gold and buy an entire working farm, right? Isn't that the time, right? Isn't the, isn't the bar of silver going to buy you a middle-class house in that time, right? But so, so he's talking here. And he says, he says, it's that when, it's that, it's that when you want wealth that truly lasts. It needs to be stored in a way that not only holds its value, but works outside the system. I thought that was gold and silver, right? I thought that was gold and silver. I thought gold and silver worked outside the system. You passed it down you easily. That, that, but he says no. He says, I'm speaking of heirlooms, fine art, classic furniture, antiques, and jewelry. Wait a second. Wait a second. I thought that during wars, revolution, economic collapses, and more, the only thing that you should hold is real money, gold and silver. And now he's saying that it's not about gold and silver. It's about holding fine art, classic fur classic furniture, antique jewelry. Wait, classic furniture, right? Remember, this is this is we're we're filling the Nazi. We're filling the Nazis here in a time machine, right? And he's talking classic furniture. We're gonna strap we're, we're gonna strap our antique couches to our back. I mean, I thought the whole point was you're gonna sew your gold gold threads into your coat. And, and and behind the buttons, you're gonna have gold coins, and and we're gonna be we're gonna be um, hauling out some fine art, antiques, and jewelry as we flee the Nazis in the World War II. I'm I'm confused. Wow, um, this is um this right this right here is 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 revolutionary, um, and he says it holds its bar like bar, it holds its value like a he goes this kind of wealth doesn't need to be declared at border crossing. 
and it doesn't have to be part of the government when purchased, and it holds its value like a bar of gold bullion when you flee borders. Okay. The message has been completely rewritten from the original message, right? I, I thought when you're fleeing the border, you, 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 you have to have something that's really transportable. Tra portable. I don't know about you, but right? But uh, 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 a, a complete set of antique furniture, we're going to flee across the border with the antique furniture? I mean, this is confusing. I mean, so, now, now here's something I want to say, is when this bull market years ago, right, when, when, when this thing was like, was roaring, right, in the, like, uh, 90, two, sorry, 2008, uh, uh, 9, 10, right, that, that was a rip-roaring gold through a bull market, right? This here, what I'm reading you, would never, ever been touted by Mike Maloney or any of the bullion dealers, ever. I mean, they, this is, this is, this is unheard of. In fact, Mike Maloney was like the, the rock of Gibraltar for the bullion movement. I mean, he was the bullion is bullion and is bullion, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's where, you know, that's, that's where it was at. And I'm um, like, what he's saying now is a radical departure from what he said before. Now, he goes on to finish the article by saying that, you know, he wants you to buy his his um his jewelry. He's got 22k investment grade gold his jewelry. That's that he, he did this whole article for say, okay, you're going to buy you're going to buy my, my gold jewelry, which apparently is is that going to qualify as an heirloom? I mean, uh uh his 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 own brand of gold is now in the same category as what the Rothschilds are going to are going to hold for generations, I guess. Uh, and just like in his previous, in his previous gold sort of thing, he said, oh yeah, the middle class, they never listen, they're going to get wiped out. The middle class, they don't do these things. And now he's saying, the middle class, they don't do these things. They don't buy heirlooms. Before, it was the middle class doesn't buy gold and silver. Now, it's the middle class doesn't buy heirlooms. I mean, let me tell you something. If I was in a time machine, right? back when I was the most believer in the gold and silver, and someone had someone, someone had given me a glimpse of the future with some kind of time machine portal thing where I could read this article, and I could have gone to my, gone to my email in the future, and I could have read this article, I would have probably sold all of my gold and silver the very day, because I would have realized that, that the pro, it was, this is propaganda. What Mike Maloney said before was complete propaganda. And now he's giving us new propaganda. I mean, it is so incredibly obvious. It's propaganda. Now, your, your question is, why don't you sell it now? Well, because the damage has been done. I mean, it's gold, gold and silver had took a big beating. I mean, they might take a more big beating, right? But when, when, when gold was, you know, near its peak, when silver was above 40, if I had seen this article, I would have had no doubt the time was to sell 100% of the gold and silver at that moment, right? If, if I had known he would have said this in the future back then, I would have, I would have, I, this would have snapped me out of my belief system so quickly for the corner, the, the, the keystone of bullion, of bullionhood, to write this article calling the middle class foolish for not holding heirlooms. When in the past, he called the middle class foolish for not buying gold and silver. For, for him to say that you need to um, hide your wealth in heirlooms and, and gold and silver isn't enough. And then at the bottom of the article to, to promote his, his gold jewelry. I mean, that's, this, this telling sign is just so big. I mean, um, I know silver, is this, the, have we found the bottom? I mean, this right here might be the might be the indication at the bottom because the cornerstone is denying the gold and silver, or it's a sign that the next leg down is here to come. It could be one one of those two. But regardless, I mean, there are a lot of people who are who are who are waiting for silver to get back to thirty, and it's like about half of thirty right now. So I mean, really, the the time to sell was thirty, forty, and above. Right now, it's it's harder to say, but this article really is telling. Wow, I mean, wow. So. Everybody be well, and I wish all of you the best luck. Thank you.